Well, on the flip side, here's how about a wrestler who's underrated and not pushed at all? Okay. Kind of like, hey, he's cool. He should be. He's just hanging around. Yeah. So what's your choice here, Nitro? Oh, for underrated talent. Well, this is a tougher uh, decision because WWE has a lot of them. And even with guys like a Daniel Bryan coming back, it's, you know, it's always tough. But I'm still... He, it's hard for me to even fathom in 2018 that he's not getting the just respect that he deserves. But I still think that a Miz uh, WWE title run or a Miz Universal title run in 2018 would be major money for the company. Just the way that he's been built up over the, the last two or three years. So I think the Miz is got to be the top underrated guy right now in wwe now would you put miz with the world title going the mania with brought in as his opponent yes yeah absolutely i wouldn't have them touch until next year's mania i'd have that, them that... I, i'd have them go on separate things and just tease throughout the year and that, that could be the trend that we're we're seeing right now you know that's the thing is that as uh, the week that we record this and that stuff on SmackDown, uh, you know, they teased a Daniel Bryan Miz encounter, but then Big Cass showed up, and we have Big Cass versus Bryan at the uh, Backlash pay per view coming up. So, I mean, that's the thing is, I I wouldn't have Miz or Bryan even get into any physical altercation until maybe you know Rumble. And then something happens, maybe even in the Rumble match, where they just, it's, right? So, just, the, the head is explode. <laughs> so, see, the way I would book it, I, I, I agree with you, like, mm -hmm. have Brian win the Rumble, Miz, Brian at Mania. Yeah. But I would have the Miz hire lackeys or henchmen to just beat down Brian month after month. Until he beats at every henchman, which could be the way that they're going with the storyline right now. You, you, we have to wait for it to play out and that stuff. This could be like mm -hmm. a, a thing where Big Cass, you know, attacks Brian on SmackDown. What's Big Cass's motives? Well, he was brought back by the Miz, knowing that you know uh, Dallas and Axel were going to be left on Raw, right? So yeah, eh. and then he pays the Usos to take out Brian, and you know, it could just be we're, a bunch of feuds. Small feuds leading up to the big feud. The Bludgeon Brothers and that stuff and everything. Mm -hmm. And then finally at the very end of it, at the end of the line, going into, you know, MetLife Stadium next year, you have Champion Miz, who would have to have got the championship by that point versus mm -hmm. Challenger Brian, right? So Yeah. That's money. Mm -hmm. That's why we're the bookers. <laughs> Which we're fun. not. We are not, <laughs> no. So, All right, what's your um, choice? My choice for underrated is Mr. Smiley, recently Finn Balor. Ah, the Balor Club. Yes. The, well, no, not anymore, well, apparently. He's a one man club now again. He, he's the one man club and the leader of the rainbow, uh, Finn Balor, which I support that, but it's not the Finn Balor that I was shown in New Japan or NXT. It's a watered down Finn who doesn't really have a gimmick other than he smiles and he supports um, all uh, all wrestlers can wrestle. It's a cool gimmick, but the thing is is that I said it before when we were watching WrestleMania together earlier this year. Uh, to use a pro hockey analogy, he's wrestling's version of pride tape right now. And mm -hmm. It's just like, okay, cool. That's, that's awesome. That's a great message to get across. But in order for it's that not a message, gimmick. It, yeah, no. <laughs> And and in order for him to mean something too, is he's got to get some victories and start you know holding some belts. That's mm -hmm. the thing. Which he he had a great start, and then he got hurt, and well, then he's just kind of been mid card since then. Ballistic Stark, but do you think the fact that he got hurt in the Universal Title inaugural contest with Seth Rollins, do you think is that a factor that might cause WWE to shy away from giving him a belt? Because absolutely. Because, Absolutely. Yeah, because that was the re the whole hang up with Daniel Bryan. After Bryan got hurt, uh, they never gave him, you know, to this day another crack at the the world championship. You know, nope. they gave him a crack at Roman Reigns and Roman Reigns' opportunity, but mm -hmm. that didn't 
pan out. So they put him in the Intercontinental title match, and yep. he walked out with the Intercontinental title and then ended up getting hurt. And, you know, his, his longest, I guess it would be layoff. We thought it was a retirement at the time, but, you know, we've been blessed yep. with Daniel Bryan returning, which is awesome, but that's, you know... Balor? There's so much more yeah. can be done with Balor. Um, I, I don't know. It sounds like they retired the demon character, which was over. I don't yeah. understand. I don't understand uh, that either. Unless maybe they're going to save it. I mean, if I was... Again, I'm not the booker. I'm, but if I were to book, yeah. I would eventually open up a Finn Balor, Broken Hardy storyline. Ah, uh, okay. That'd be Where he throws him back into the lake and then he becomes Demon Balor, leaving the lake. Be wild. Mm-hmm. Cool. No, that's awesome. This is two great uh, choices, obviously here. So, 